All right, so everything's there together. Once again, we are going to do our one quick little flight here, flight test, just to see. All I want to see is this, is this going to go into space? And to do this, I'm going to talk through the launch as we get there. I have no idea how far this rocket is going to go. But if you press T, the hotkey, you turn on SAS. Very important if you have a pilot or a probe core that'll do that. So let's go ahead and fire the engines. Here we go, up in the air. Now for the Kerbal Space Program as it currently stands, what you need to consider, one thing that you need to consider is the fact that as you get higher up in the atmosphere, you can eventually start doing some little kind of gravity turn. And maybe I should have used some bigger solid boosters here. But like I said, this is just a basic little test. Once we get to about 2,000 meters or more, you want to start tipping your vessel to the right just, just a touch. It's going to be really hard to do with the solid boosters shooting forth fiery venom right now. But you'll see we're still going pretty fast at about 5,000 meters. It's a little difficult to control, and we have a winglet that's actually... These winglets will turn around to try and make things work. The clouds are in here from a mod that I added in. Uh, city clouds and lights. It, you can get it to work, but it takes some finagling on the uh, new update here. But once you get to around 10,000 meters, we're in the old beta alpha stages of Kerbal Space Program. Technically, in real life, you want to have your gravity turn be more aggressive and get here earlier. But since we're here, you want to have your uh, angle as close to 45 degrees by 90 degrees as possible. And right now my ship's a little unhappy. I could have turned on the debug menu to see where the drag forces are. But without these winglets here, this ship would just be pulling down in the front. But this is helping keep it balanced. So this is not at all really a straight orbit. But if we go, you can see this marker here is the prograde marker. And if we go to map mode real quick, we can zoom in and see our apoapsis. We want to get this to about, we want to get it over 70,000 meters to get in the orbit. This is already telling me that this rocket's not going to make it into orbit, which is fine. This is just a test rocket anyway. But basics in flight include a few different things. We'll talk about maneuver nodes and how to make those work in some other videos. But here's the idea. We're flying a rocket. It didn't cost too much to go. We can actually crank up the velocity now that we're at 24,000 meters, 25,000 meters. And we're flying above the prograde marker. That means we're going to be trying to put our altitude up a little higher. I don't know if the LV-909 is going to be enough, but we are out of the lower atmosphere, so it may be able to push this tiny thing into there. We'll see. We have no monopropellant. We're losing out on liquid fuel in a hurry. So, three, two, one, and once you run out of fuel down here, what you need to do is press spacebar to stage, press spacebar to stage again, and suddenly we have a tiny little rocket. Is it going to make it? We're at, oh wow, we actually have an apoapsis of 80,000. 90,000. Let's stop here. You can press X to stop. So, notice that our marker changed to orbital velocity. We're making our way up into space. And what you can do here, once you unlock patch conics, if you're playing career mode or if you're playing sandbox mode, you can do this right now, is click on the apoapsis. You want to add a maneuver and you want to stretch it out as much as possible. You'll see your apoapsis and periapsis eventually move around. If you have the periapsis at 50,000, you'll sink back into carbon and not be in a stable orbit. But once you get to right here, 80,000, 96,000, you'll know because the periapsis and apoapsis start to switch places, that means you're golden. You'll have your markers down here. You have your estimated burn of one minute and you have your node in one minute and 37 seconds, 36 seconds, 34 seconds. Now, the, the mistake that a lot of people will make early on before they realize it is that if you just wait to burn until the maneuver node, you're doing it too late. You want to burn evenly on both sides of the maneuver node. And right now, we're our apoapsis is shifting just a little bit. So let's shift this. Not like that. Let's, mm. here's, the other, here's the other problem that we have is that these maneuver node markers are really easy to poke. But we're going to be, we're going to be okay. Let's recreate it real quick, just so that we don't lose it here. Those blue circles and uh, purple triangles are very important, but we're going to play with those another time. All right, so there we go, our apoapsis. We don't have to have a perfectly circular orbit, but we do know that we have about a one-minute burn, so we want to burn about 30 seconds on each side. I didn't plan it that way, but that's a really nice, simple demonstration. And because we have this fuel tank and the LV-909, which is a very efficient engine, we should be able to get that burn all in one set. So node in 30 seconds, let's start our burn. 
there is a button to start the burn immediately, but you'll see how much this marker means how much delta V is left. You need about 23,000 plus meters per second of velocity to get into a stable orbit around Kerbin at over 100,000 100, meters. We're at 90,000 meters, so our orbital velocity is going to need to be a little bit different, a little bit higher. But we also it also takes energy to raise up out of the orbit. So if we focus right here on the planet, you'll see we're now on the other side of the maneuver node. You can see our periapsis, which that's all, that marker should not be showing up except that I have the Kerbal Alarm Clock mod installed. So sorry for not doing this on a fresh clean install. Don't freak out by the fact that your apoapsis is moving, that your maneuver node marker is moving. What you want to see is that we're getting here that the blue periapsis is what we want to see. We flip it around and we are in orbit. We're in orbit with about 80,000 fuel to spare. Fantastic. So we can kind of do all this in one go. If you want to time accelerate, press period. If you want to time decelerate, press comma. Jebediah is up in the air. We'll just go in orbit. Whee! So Jebediah is going to be in orbit. You cannot time accelerate super fast after or until you're a ways out there. But here is the dark side of the planet with all the city lights and everything on. So like I said, that's a, that's a mod you can install. We don't have to worry about that here because all we're trying to demonstrate is flying and then the opposite of flying. You can see now that my ship is pointing butt first. This is intentional. We are in between the apoapsis and the periapsis. And all we're going to do here is anytime you want to get out of orbit, the best way to do it is not to burn straight down. The best way to do it, and we're going to make a maneuver node to demonstrate it, I hope. I've had my maneuver nodes kind of screw up on me recently where they don't always want to show up. So we may be doing it with a maneuver node. We may be doing it without a maneuver node. I guess we'll be doing it without a maneuver node. You see this marker right here? It is the retrograde marker. You want to burn on it. All that does is it lowers your lateral velocity and you'll see the periapsis move around. And eventually what's going to happen is that your periapsis is going to sink into the planet. Now on career mode, you want to try and land your vessels as close to Kerbal Space Center as possible because that gets you more money. But right now, you can see that we are just going to be going for some kind of continental landing. We'll see how that goes. I'm really sorry about the maneuver node issues here. But we can kind of turn off SAS now if we want to. And in fact, the other thing that you can do, I do have a lot of fuel to spare, but I'm not going to bother with it right now. We can open up to do science as well. Yeah, right click, science. Log the gravity data. Yay. We're in a... We're playing in sandbox mode, so gravity, none of this matters. We don't get any science, so let's close this. Since we get no science and we have no science to worry about, let's go ahead and decouple. Oh no, my battery power's gone. What does that mean? If I have my SAS on, I will be draining battery, and I have no solar panels on here. Also note that I do not have a heat shield on here, but because I chose the MK1 command pod, I don't need a heat shield for reentry heat. Reentry heat? What do you mean reentry heat? Let's time accelerate and find out. Now see, I can turn off the SAS anytime I want to here. Once you get to 70,000 meters, you're back in the atmosphere and you're going to slow down. Now you don't need to keep SAS on the entire time. In fact, I would advise that you do not keep SAS on the entire time. If you look at the map mode, you'll see that this line is going to be gradually moving down. There are two forces at work that are making your ship go back down. One is the force of gravity, which Kerbin has equivalent gravity to Earth. The other is atmospheric uh, resistance or friction. Right now we're in the upper atmosphere, so atmospheric resistance is low. Most of what's pulling us down is gravity, which being in orbit, the best description I've heard of it is going fast enough to forget how to fall down. You're just falling constantly around the planet, but you're going so fast you never hit the ground. That's what a stable orbit is, but right now if we just accelerate a little bit more, if you're, if you're in the atmosphere and you do your time acceleration, you notice these change color yellow, orange, red. This is physical time acceleration. Used to be the best way to summon the Kraken in Kerbal Space Program, the Kraken being something that will uh, eat your parts and cause gravitational issues, but as the games progress from alpha to beta, etc., that's been fixed. But you can see already our periapsis is falling. It's still in the middle of the planet. We are going to be going on a collision course with the ground. Now, don't believe people who say that you can launch your parachute right now. You don't want to. They just recently patched a Kerbal Space Program to fortunately make it where if you deploy your parachute right now, your parachute will just instantly burn to a crisp and die. 
but you're going to see right away we're at 40,000 meters. This line's moving a little bit faster now because we're in the other part of the upper atmosphere. We're flying over desert, which is all well and good. 39,000 meters, 38. And we're going to be making a landing on the land. And we'll talk a little bit later about how to calculate this. But the more important thing right now is when you have resistance plus uh, um, a movable object or anything like that here, what you end up getting is friction. And friction on this kind of surface means fire because this is hitting the atmosphere fast enough to actually burn to a crisp. And you can see this line is now moving quite a bit faster. I want to focus on the basic rocket and it's not going to let me. So we're on fire now going back towards the atmosphere here. If I deploy the parachutes right now, Jebediah will die. And we don't want to kill Jebediah. We want to use him on later missions because he's a badass. And it's not just me being a fanboy. He actually does have the badass trait if you look at the character files. Valentina Kerman does too. Bill and Bob, not so badass, but still vital to the space program. All right. Notice I don't have SAS on, but due to the force, the wind resistance forces and everything and the way that this ship is heavier on the bottom, it's orange right now because it's heated, but it can handle the temperature here. If you have anything attached down here, that's where stuff starts to flip around and you have issues. You can also see little sonic matters here. Our surface speed is about 600 meters per second and falling because now atmospheric resistance is very important as well as gravitational forces. Gravitational is Gravity is a constant force, that's true, but now that we're in the atmosphere, some people like to deploy their parachutes really early. I like to play it safe, so all I'm going to do here is just wait to deploy the parachute right about now. No. You see, because I decoupled early, the stages had to disappear here, but you press space to press space to stage. And there we go. This is a video that I meant to be a little shorter, and it ended up being a little longer. That's okay. So what do we talk about in this video today? I'm just going to time accelerate to the landing. You can see our surface speed is going down just fine. But what do we talk about in the video today? We talked about building a rocket. You want to, you want to choose the right command module for the mission. You want to choose the right engines for the mission. You want to make sure that everything is on there appropriately. You want things to point up and fire up. Then once that happens, you want to go into the atmosphere, stage appropriately, check your staging, and make sure you have everything you need for your mission. But right now, the parachute is once deployed, and the ground is suddenly not coming so fast. Jebediah, I hope you like the desert, because you're going to be stuck there. So thanks for watching. This is Asher. I'll be putting out some more tutorials in the future. Some basic and not some, some not so basic, but if you're new to Kerbal Space Program and you just want a brief tour of how to fly, how to get into orbit, how to land, here you go. If you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe. If you have any additional thoughts, feel free to comment. Otherwise, I will see you all next time.